generally patients might ask you i'm having a ct scan you know what what sort of um risk do i have now there's two types of risk that or two types of effects biological effects adverse effects from radiation some would be um readily visible and happen very acutely we'll talk about how we categorize those and others would happen uh, in, in delayed and then we're mainly there talking about cancers mm. so the the very rapid um effects are only in very high doses we don't really see those so they may be seen in somebody who's had radiotherapy or occasionally and less much less now because the machinery is a lot better actually uh, in cardiology where they have very long screening times when they're doing difficult um, interventional procedures which you know they absolutely have to see what they're doing and they have a very very focused x-ray beam but in the early days particularly i mean in the 60s and 70s patients did have erythema at the entry site to the to the x-ray beam now, and that was not uncommon but the, that, that interesting was quite a, quite a high dose you need really compared to most imaging very high dose to get any physical noticeable effect like like skin burns and things like that if you've seen um, Chernobyl, the, yes, uh, yes, then you're going to see a lot of very extreme. It's an amazing series, but uh, mm. we're nowhere near that, and nothing like it, obviously. So this is a this is a graph showing these effects, these immediate effects, or when I say immediate, short term, you know, hours, weeks, days, weeks, um, due to things like radiation burns or or cataract formation, that sort of thing. So in these um types of effects there's actually a threshold below which you don't have any effect so you don't have any skin damage or or, heat or or burning but you get to a threshold and you will then start to get an effect and that's something that you would see in different individuals to a, to a very similar degree and these are called deterministic effects okay so you can see the graph there shows there's a threshold it's okay and nothing's happened and then you get a rise and it will then start to to plateau out but it's basically a rise roughly proportionate to the um to the dose so the other type of effect and particularly carcinogenesis is the strange term stochastic effects and this this is interesting stochastic effects because we don't have we don't expose patients to such radiation doses that give them a, an individual high risk of a cancer we really don't so we we can't use medical uh radiation data really and, and histories to see what effects we're having from our are relatively low compared to the nuclear industry or, or nuclear disasters um effects of radiation so there's there's a number of historic studies um in the um in the 1930s they they would have workers they were actually they were all women and they would paint the clock hands and watch hands with with um uh, radium paint to make them glow in the dark and they would lick their tongue with a paintbrush get a bit of the stuff oh, yeah. paint it lick their tongue again to make a nice sharp point and they had a very high incidence in fact they followed 3,000 of them and 550 got carcinomas in the jaw and in, <laughs> and, and, and in the mouth uh, so from that so that was terrible we know of course the the atomic bombs in the Second World War Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, they about 500,000 people were exposed to the the effect of those bombs 200,000 died immediately leaving 300,000 who had very high exposures to radiation they followed a cohort of about 86,000 of those for 50 years from 1950 to 2000 and they were able to see uh, uh, quite a in, in the first uh, decade a, a peak of leukemias and then after that a gradually rising number of carcinomas until eventually they were getting old and they were there were, there were less numbers because they were very old people by by, by right. the year 2000. So it's that sort of information that we use to, if you look at this graph, the right hand solid part, that is from data we've got from these sort of studies, but we can extrapolate down to low area, the, the purple blob is, is in the medical exposure and we can extrapolate and assume where the, the relative risk is so those are those studies that have given us the information that we base our estimate of relative risk of causing a cancer so those are funny terms aren't they stochastic and deterministic the way to remember it if you really want to go for a gold medal deterministic think of of dermatology deterministic gives you the skin problems that are going to happen immediately stochastic it's the cancers and um so that's the other the other group 
So it's a strange term, um, but you may you may you may never hear it again. But uh, you'll impress somebody if you come up with that. 